Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So DJI has been busy with firmware updates. We got quite a few last week and today we get some now for the Mavic 3. This morning DJI released the new Mavic 3 Classic, which is basically the Mavic 3 except it doesn't have the tele lens and it comes in at a much more affordable price. But the nice thing about that is some of the new features that they did add for the Mavic 3 Classic have trickled down to the original Mavic 3. On top of that, there was a firmware update for the RC Pro and the DJI RC as they're both compatible with the Mavic 3. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the release notes first and then we'll take a look at some of the updates. So the RC Pro has been updated to version 03.01.1100. And you can see under the release notes there, it says it's added the ability to close the prompt by using the C1 and C2 button after the low battery return to home prompts. And as you can see there, that is only available for the Mavic 3 Classic the Mini 3, and the original Mavic 3. And the same updates are available for the DJI RC. Firmware version for it is now version 01.02.0100. And again, if you take a look at the release notes, it adds the exact same new features to both controllers. And of course, the Mavic 3 itself got a firmware update. The aircraft firmware version is now 01.00.0900. If we take a look at the release notes, you can see it's added a new night mode and recording mode. It's added output quality settings for hyperlapse. It's added spotlight and point of interest when using the telecamera, which is kind of interesting. It's added cruise control, and you can see there it's added gain and expo tuning, the maximum flight speed, brake sensitivity, and other settings can be adjusted in the different flight modes. It's added EU C1 certification. It's added support for remote ID in the United States. It's optimized the name rule for footage. The footage name is incremental after formatting, and it's fixed some issues there. You can see color was abnormal in DNG photos and fix some minor bugs. On top of that, the Fly app has been updated for both controllers and for smartphones as well. It is now version 1.8.0. So let's go ahead here. We're gonna take a look at how to access some of these new features. Uh, first of all, the cruise control, and that's actually something I'm pretty interested in, uh, but you do have to set that up first. You have to assign it to one of the buttons. And we do so by going into our settings. We go to control, and then we're just gonna scroll down until we get to button customization. And we click on that. And in this menu is where we can set all our button customization options. Uh, we can set our C1 button, C2 button, C3 button. So right now you can see my C3 button, which is this one up here on the side. Right now it's set to none, so we can click on it. And then at the top there, it does give us a few options. We can set some uh, camera parameters there, or in this case, we're gonna go over to control. And then what we're gonna do is select cruise control. Now at this point, it's kind of like the DJI FPV drone. You could set cruise control when flying. So now you can get up to the speed you want, press cruise control, and the drone's just gonna continue at that speed in the direction it's heading. So that's kind of interesting. I'm looking forward to testing that out. Uh, the other thing that they've done here, which we can't test because we're not up in the air, is that you can now use spotlight and point of interest while using the tele mode. So if we switch over to the tele mode there, we can now select a subject on the screen and of course, you know, do a point of interest or use spotlight. Now, I'm not sure if you can just do it right on the screen there or if we have to go into the full explore mode. I will be testing that out later today. Now, the other thing that they've done here is if we go over to hyperlapse, and then we click down here to bring up our options, you can see we have this new output as high or preview. From what I understand, if you set it to preview, it gives you this little note here. It basically says, original video is automatically saved when output quality is set to preview. Generating output with preview quality takes less time. Any jitter or flicker is not removed. So another interesting update that they've added, if we go into our video settings, you can see we've selected video there, we have this new night mode. It's supposed to help nighttime shots, add some processing, some denoising in that. Can't really make any comment on it, how well it works, because I haven't been able to test it out yet, but I do plan on doing that tonight. But a nice little feature that they've added there. And lastly here, if we go over to our camera settings and we select D-Log, if we go back now to Pro Mode, and then we bring up our settings for our ISO, you can see we can now go all the way up to 1600. And of course, lastly here, if we go into Gain and Expo Tuning, we have some new options in there for fine tuning how the drone behaves. So that's always a good thing as well. So a lot of nice new features added. I hopefully will be able to get out this afternoon, do a test flight and test some of these new features out. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you found this video informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.